Hi folks, welcome to the 8th Regents Tournament. So, a little bit late today, so we have to uh, join the game soon. So this is game 6 of uh, Baratheon against Targaryen. We're going to watch Stelios playing against Xin Yu Yi from the Targaryen team. And the game has started. Uh, so let me update you on the result. Baratheon leads this one 4-1, so Baratheon has already won this match. And, uh, yeah, quick apology, I missed game 5, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I convinced myself that it was played uh, an hour later and then, of course, I failed to record it. Uh, Dennis won with uh, Barra Brotherhood against, uh, I think, a Sea of Blood deck. And uh, definitely uh, had a good game there, getting... Uh, uh, Azor a high reborn immediately and uh, just uh, dominating with uh, by going first and intimidating the opposition and then also grabbing some renown on his characters. But this time we have uh, huh, okay, Targaryen wasting a, a non agenda banner of the dragon against Kingdom of Shadows with uh, interesting setup, two cards in shadows and then just chamber. But hitting with the economy, hitting the jack jackpot here with uh, Summer Harvest. Tormund, interesting. And we have Karl Drogo duped. So immediate problem for the Shadows deck. And he has insight as well. So if he got Queensguard, that would be really annoying. Could participate in three challenges and grab cards to keep standing in that case. King's Landing, nice source of economy, hopefully won't be hit with Political Disaster, although it's uh, pretty decent against Political Disaster actually. Can keep itself and uh, still uh, use its ability for a two gold potentially. Hello there. Hello, so we have uh, Peter joining us from uh, the Breton team. Nice to have some company. No problem, Mia. How's it going? Yeah, going fine. Very happy that uh, we don't have to um, have this uh, final day stress this time. We've already secured the go. match. No, it's very exciting stuff, you know. I thought, I, I assumed the worst when I got us off to a bad start this week, but, you know, the team really stepped up, so it's been good to see. Yeah, I was uh, pessimistic as well because uh, all the games were really evenly matched on paper. And to win all four of them was uh, a huge bonus for us. Yeah, it's a great boon. Okay, and we have oh, Sun yeah. Neil, but Melisandre is unprotected. This is going to be a problem, I think. He probably has, well, I would imagine he has something in shadows as a trick. We shall see. Yeah, so Kingdom of Shadows deck means these cards in shadows, of course, have to have the shadow keyword and only two gold left. So obviously there could be uh, our bank will have its due to keep Melisandre safe. Otherwise, he would still need two characters because of Karl Drogo just to uh, keep her alive. And that could be a problem. I'm interested to see Stelios' take on Kingdom of Shadows because when I was attempting to build it, I almost found it more effective as, I wouldn't call it a false banner, but almost a false shadow banner where you had a very few kind of selected shadow cards from different factions that would support a larger base. And aha, here we are with... Uh, <laughs> Two characters, yeah. <laughs> Still important ones, though. They, you don't want Sereldon killed. Boros says some, there's only one copy. But one card left could be old Bill Bone that would absorb a lot of military claim then. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so Kingdom of Shadows completely redesigned. The previous ability punished you actually for marshalling characters, so you included uh, a huge Shadows package, just the best cards from all factions, and this one is the opposite now. Punishes you for uh, having nothing on the board, so you need uh, something from your uh, main faction, and then uh, a smaller package, presumably, with just uh, the cards that fit. And Boros does fit nicely, he can uh, grab that Eldon. And uh, Eldon escapes, so he could be played and now he's next round. for Shadows. Didn't actually manage to stand anything. <laughs> so that's one military challenge gone, and now does Boros get killed here? Looks like it. I'm almost surprised that he didn't. Uh, well, maybe Eldon is instrumental for using black black cells or uh, kind of economy with the northern encampments. But I would almost be halfway tempted to use uh, Iron Bank on Boros because <laughs> he's just so handy. Yeah, possibly there are three Eldons in the deck and only one Boros, so don't want a dead right. draw. But uh, I don't think Northern encampments fit in this deck with... Uh, we do have Chamber, so there should be Thrown, but King's Landing kind of needs the King's Gates uh, to work, so... Questionable. Huh, Priest is coming without actually needing anything now. Interesting. Uh, but, um, yeah, so Black Cell is certainly uh, great location and then the other one is Storm's End which I don't think fits in this deck perfectly and then I don't think what else uh, you could possibly stand um, okay so winning dominance but chamber unfortunately has no power to steal so surviving this one pretty well leading on power leading on cards in hand but uh, the board state is the, the worry here because Karl Drogo is protected, he still has that uh, two military challenges pressure and has insight on him. I'm interested, I'm interested to see what Stellius' play here, if he, um, if there's a reason why he brought the Ashai Priestess out or, I mean, the Shadow Priestess out, you know, after Boros was killed, because I feel like he could have stopped the second military challenge with her. Yes, Maybe exactly. Setting up her to Iris? I don't know. So he's gone for gold here against Time of Plenty. So looks like he's just happy to marshal a bunch of stuff to, to stop the two military claim. And I think political disaster with Targaryen always a possibility. We have the two locations here that uh, sacrifice themselves. So I'm thinking uh, some dupes would be nice for that King's Landing in the chamber. And unfortunately, Milk on Melisandre not going to help his cause. Hmm. Card in Shadow, so hired assassins are available to Stelios. So if it's Aegon, could be killed pretty easily with that. And just going for more draw. This is where King's Landing is very useful. So any location you draw with that trait, it just replaces itself. Whether it's uh, King's Landing or the Economy, City Gates or uh, King's Gate in this case. And usually thrown in chamber can uh, somehow keep you in the game against uh, a deck like this, but there is renown on this occasion. So against Burn, which is really slow to gain power, even if it kills your board, you survive with Throne in Chamber pretty okay. But here we have uh, Drogo with renown and Tormund potentially with renown if he uses his ability. Only two cards left to pick from. A 
Oh, the new bear. This is the new Barristan. Mm, the claim raising one. Could have done even more damage. This is a very much an aggro deck. <laughs> yeah, hand is small, but then uh, insight on Drogo. So if that's King's Guard, that could be annoying in Shadows. Uh, Queen's Guard, I mean. Yes. There's also the problem that uh, Stelios has to be careful about picking his challenges to uh, win this round. Well, assuming that his board doesn't get aggroed. Uh, because you don't want to be replenishing the Tark player's hand for free when it comes to it. Yeah, I think he might just uh, defend to the best of his ability here. And then uh, mm -hmm. whatever power is uh, gained, he can take back with the chamber potentially. Card of Shadows, now uh, Black Cells will be very, very nice <laughs> to slow Drogo. <laughs> Okay, getting rid of the last hand, the Horn of Winter, which is, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good um, card against this deck because it forces you to use Black Cells immediately, otherwise it gets assaulted, and of course it can hit the chamber. Surprised he didn't play it actually, still has to go left, so must be thinking of using this card in Shadows. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that should stop the second military challenge. Hopefully. It's going to be Intimidate as well, probably on Melisandre. Or on the Red Priest, I imagine. Just to... But no. If Agion cares about having a military, taking military claim. Just sack Friedman. Oh. There it is. You called it. Yeah. Definitely didn't want to see that. Well, now Black Cells does, of course, um, counter it. But we don't see it in play, unfortunately. Now the pointy end, if it's in the deck, which again, doubtful, could get rid of both of these uh, attachments on Karl Drogo. <laughs> now do you claim the Red Priest here? Gives him back the Bariston. Oh, oh, that's just, that's just rude. <laughs> yeah, comes straight back. And the Red Priest survives. It's a, yeah, I think that's the right call. You don't want to give him Barrison as well. And that's another card in hand that he could discard, at the very least. Yeah, this one possibly will be on a post as well. And then you try to strike back, maybe. I think, I think, um, from the look of this deck, I would hope that uh, Celius runs some resets, maybe like Dohyrus, that could potentially bail him out a little bit. Of course, you're going to have a unstoppable call, Drogo, but if the board will not be as oppressive. You can get rid of that Intimidate with uh, Torment. Yeah, unfortunately though, the the King's Road in play and Bariston, well actually the Red Priest was still in wow. play for, yes. yeah, for one round. So maybe. But if Bariston uh, comes into play, that's a problem. For sure. Now he decided to defend just to stop the Ano post, which means Red Priest cannot strike back. Obviously with Light Summer Fist uh, in trick claim doesn't matter that much. 
Ah, uh, okay, and still going for this, of course, why not? There's also the possibility that Celius may run Delena in the deck, which would it's also a handy counter for something like Queensguard. Yes, she would bring uh, another character also into play, but um, I don't think he plays her, unfortunately, from what I saw last night when I looked at the first draft of this deck. I might have uh, changed it a bit since then. Chamber kind of stalls it a little bit, so 8-5, not too bad, but 8 power after 2 rounds. Potentially only needs two more and it's game over if nothing is done about Karl Drogo. Yes. Confiscation will do some work here. Gifts discarded for uh, Queensguard last round. And I think you get rid of the stand here. And now, uh, no cards after this round. So if uh, Stereo survives, would be a good time to then play a reset. He could kill the Red Priest here because Baristan, of course, goes into back to hand with uh, zero reserve. Now I wonder if he runs a careless position. He could be mean and cancel that King's Road. I suppose not. <laughs> it could be um, four military claim before anything happens, unfortunately. But uh, you could put something in into shadows and then uh, see if uh, you can maybe do a power challenge or something after uh, Agion is done here. The Iron Bank would have its due, would be very nice this round. <laughs> and again, a card in Shadows, hopefully not another uh, Queen's Guard. But even if it's Aegon to fetch Dario Naharis with his renown, I think that um, has a good chance of ending it here in the Challenges phase. <laughs> Selissi would be good, as usual, but again, another card that doesn't quite fit. No deck space to play everything. And here we go, Melisandre back to hand. But what do you do with the gold now? Just the Black Cells on Karl Drogo to stop Renown would be nice. Mm -hmm. And what does Jiqui do? So she needs a Lord or Lady. Which means nothing on the board currently. Aegon would be a lord. I wonder if he runs hired assassin. Hmm, doesn't look like it. I know that's a very niche. It's a very niche pick. It's in the banish deck. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh... You wouldn't play it against Baratheon, I don't think, because uh, the chances of yeah, playing against Shadows there are pretty low. But against Targaryen, um, even if uh, there is just Aegon, he is in almost every deck, it seems. So, mm -hmm. chance to hit him. Eight go left, and. Uh, now what does uh, I can do here? Go for the other challenges first. To force uh, stuff to come into play before military claim. So Stelios brings the priestess. Unfortunately she can't um, kneel 
Karl Drogo, because he has yeah. an attachment. The attachment. But you know, using her to remove uh, one more renowned character from the game is definitely a good call. Red Priest, happy to die now. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how close this gets. So there should be two renown after this, so that will be 11. So any kind of stand, I think, means it's game over. Uh, and here it is, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, just the black cells, I think, would have solved this early power gain. But uh, didn't draw it early on. And now I think this is game over. Ah, that was gifts anyway, and three gold left. <laughs> yeah, quick one. That was pretty impressive here. For there we go. Targaryen winning with a non-agenda against one of our worst agendas. I think statistically it was it was at the very bottom actually. It had something like uh, I, I don't know exactly, but uh, one one win and six losses, something like that, or maybe a, a bit more games. Uh, not sure. But uh, Stelios again, I think he had to play Bar of Watch in round one and now stuck with this one, which obviously uh, wasn't a strong agenda. But uh, fortunately, doesn't matter. Means it's 4 2 in our favor now before the final game. Okay, so uh, thanks, Peter, for uh, joining me. We'll have a think about how to cover the, the last game that I have to play. No problem, Miha. Best of luck. Thank you. And thanks all right. to all of our viewers for joining us uh, once again, and we'll see you next time.